Thank you very much. Uh, before I begin my, begin my talk, I would like to thank you again for coming up today and showing up. Uh, because let's be honest, it's a Saturday, you offered a free day to come here, and you had no idea what you uh, could expect. It. You saw the name Ted, you saw the name Nairo Road, and you thought, well, this is a fun combination. Then you went to the website, you saw our names, you thought, who the hell are these people? But still, you, can't, you came, and I really like that, so thank you very much for that. All right. <laughs> let's get started. Uh, my name is Sjoerd, I'm an entrepreneur in the video game industry and I've got a background in both art, I come from art school, and business. I've done my MBA here. And as you see, that's a different world, to say the least. Uh, these last seven years, it has been my task to combine the, uh, the creative world and the business world together and try to forge them into a highly creative, artistic video game company that's also profitable. That wasn't an easy task to do, to say the least. It was kind of a struggle, uh, a nice struggle though, but trying to combine these worlds, it's like, I don't know, mixing oil and vinegar together. And any one of you who's ever tried to do that, you will know it's, a, it's hard to do. But when you manage to mix oil and vinegar together, you enter the world of the new, the world where wonders can happen. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The world of wonders, the world of the new. Because I'm on a mission, and my mission is to help fellow entrepreneurs in the creative industry. The fun thing about the creative industry is that most people who work there, or almost everybody who works there, works there because they like it. They love it. It's their passion. If they are writers or uh, into fashion or architects, it doesn't matter. They all want to do this job. They, they want to work on this amazing project. The thing with that is that because they have this big uh, internal drive, they tend to forget the business side of their company. They rally up a team, uh, everybody's enthusiastic, they start working on a project, and because they are convinced that this will be the best thing ever, like I said, they tend to neglect the business part. And it's true, some of them are even opposed to it. But what if we can combine that raw creative power with just a little bit of business sense. We can merge that together. Because the thing is, they are so passionate about their work, uh, they are convinced that everybody will like it. Everybody will just love their new book, or their new film, or their new game. But it's not true. And the, most of these projects come out as a big failure. From a commercial point of view, I mean from an artistic point of view, or from a creative point of view, even craftsmanship, it's, it's the best thing ever, it's beautiful. But from a business point of view, most projects are complete and utter failure. What if we combine these two worlds, and what if we can have the default outcome set to, well, at least a moderate success? That will change the world. And I know what you're thinking, it's impossible to uh, to have creative people become more business savvy. But I think that's not true. I really, because in history, there have been a lot of examples where these two worlds are mixed, where oil and vinegar are mixed in a correct way. Let me give you an example. Oh. Astrophysics. Astrophysics is right now is the most efficient way we have to study distant galaxies. We can study suns and planets millions of light years away from us just by looking at them and we can see what they're made of, how old they are. And astrophysics uh, was born when we combined physics with chemistry. Obvious at this moment in time, but it was a huge uh, revelation back then. Biomimicry. Biomimicry is the combination between biology and robotics and is right now one of the largest growing fields in robot engineering. Molecular cooking. It's the combination of uh, scientific experiments, you know, the little laboratory stuff, combined with the art of fine dining. And if this is too expensive for you, uh, at least for me it is, um, fusion cooking. Fusion cooking is when you take recipes and meals from different cultures, uh, different countries, and put them together for a new dish. Last example I want to give you about how oil and vinegar can be mixed is on a project I've been working on for the last four years. We got a call four years ago from the Technical University of Delft, 
and they asked if we want to help them with a big project. They would set up a PhD research program where the, the research question was, how can we use games and game technologies to help elderly people with dementia? I don't know how many of you are, have someone in your direct surroundings who suffers from dementia, uh, but for a lot of us can relate to this. Elderly people with dementia uh, who are in the middle or last phase, uh, they can't activate themselves anymore, and that's a big problem. They lose the ability to stand up and do something else if they want to. Right now, we are in a room full of people, of which I assume you all have healthy brains, and when you get bored, you can just stand up and leave. And I'm so glad you're all still sitting. This is a really dangerous part in every, time when I talk, every time I talk about this. Uh, but because they've lost that ability, they just sit in a chair, uh, look vaguely in the distance, and do nothing. And the problem is apathy can emerge. And apathy is a total lack of emotions and feelings. And it's not only something that affects them physically, but also, uh, not only mentally, sorry, but also physically. Their muscles stiffen, they get bored, they get depressed. And that's why in most nursing homes you see the staff, the nurses, and family members are, are trying to, to entertain them, trying to keep them busy. They're playing games with them, uh, reading out the newspaper, telling stories, all different ways to keep them active. This, of course, costs a lot of time and a lot of energy. So what we've made after four years of intense research is a little box. A little box that we mount in the ceiling uh, in a nursing home right above the dinner table. And in the box, it contains a projector, sensors, and a computer. And it projects small games on the dining table. And they can play the games, as you saw in the previous picture, by just moving their hands around the table. So in this example, these are just small flowers that are going over the table. And as soon as they touch them and move, uh, move their hands, the flowers will grow in size, and it starts to become one really big, trippy uh, experience. And it's so much fun. You see them laughing and engaging and just having the best time ever. Uh, I would like to show you a very small clip about some of the results we had with this. It was so much fun to work on this project, um, especially as a game developer. Uh, a lot of people who don't know the game industry, they, they think that we only work on uh, shooters and to shoot Nazi zombies in space. And it's fun to shoot Nazi zombies in space, but <laughs> this is also very rewarding to work on. Um, like I said, this was a result of four years intense uh, research and study, and we've start selling this to nursing homes uh, since six months, and it's now installed in over 85 nursing homes in the Netherlands and Belgium, and we're rolling out to the rest of Europe. Uh, but the way we've worked here, I think, is a great example of how we mixed our oil and vinegar. Because we had our PhD researcher, Hester Andriessen. She was from the Technical University of Delft from Industrial Design. We had the VU University of Amsterdam, uh, the Department of Clinical Neuropsychology, and we had us as game developers. Uh, and how do you mix oil and vinegar? You need a binding agent. And for us, it was the nursing homes. The nursing homes, uh, we've worked together with them, uh, with nurses, with uh, patients. You need a binding, binding agent. Because the problem, the, the thing is, what most people think, uh, when you want to solve a big problem, the ones who are responsible for that particular field, they should also fix the problem. For example, uh, when you work in a company and sales figures goes down, who has to solve that problem? Sales department. When uh, personnel is calling in sick or, or maybe even on strike, well, HR better has to solve that problem. When there are too many traffic jams in the city, well, the Department of Infrastructure better has to solve that problem. The thing is, 
they know too much about the subject. They know too much about the problem. And that's why they can't think of new creative ideas. They can't enter the world of the new out of themselves. I will now play out for you, <coughs> for your entertainment, uh, some very common things I've s I'm seeing in corporate brainstorm sessions. Right, here we go. <coughs> right, everybody, uh, we've got a big problem, and I need answers, and I need my an answers now. Johnson, what do you got? No, that's stupid. Smith, what do you've got? No, that doesn't work. Another one. <coughs> uh, chef, I've got an idea. No, 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 never mind, never mind. That will never work. No, 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 no. What if we... No, 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 that's a bad idea, that's a bad idea. Oh, oh I need to think of something. Oh, um, how about this great solution? We tried that three years ago, that, that didn't work, and no, the Department of Finance will never prove it. That's a bad idea. I hope you know what I'm getting with this. If you know too much about a problem, uh, you limit yourself. Um, and that's more or less my, my conclusion, which I want to give you uh, with his speech. When you go to your work Monday and you're faced with a big challenge, the first thing you have to do is that you might not be the one that's actually going to solve it. Instead, be a binding agent. Find your oil, find, find your vinegar, and be a binding agent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.